This video is a recording of the content that will be covered in Game-Based Learning Week 4's lecture. For this lecture, what we will be doing is discussing firstly some of the assessment tools that are available in Minecraft Education and experimenting with how we could use these assessment tools uh, to assess our students' progress um, within Minecraft-based projects. We will also look at how students themselves could use these tools to teach one another and to give feedback to one another within their Minecraft project. Once we have done this task, we will then look at the assignment. We will discuss the assignment, making reference and walking through a sample progressional scheme. Any questions that you have regarding this, you can bring to your lecturer in week five's lecture. Following on from that discussion, we will then look at Hour of Code. Uh, the students in class will be asked to take part in Hour of Code and to do some tasks. Students, similarly, who are watching this video will be asked to take part in the Hour of Code, go to the website and begin some of the lessons. So starting from the top, we will be looking firstly today in week four of our digital learning loop page. You will see that the first uh, section has in-game assessment tools. When you click on this link, you will be brought to a list of different videos um, that demonstrate how certain tools can be used in Minecraft for assessment purposes. Some of these tools you might be familiar with and some might be new to you. The camera, there is a video here on how to use the camera. There's a video on how to use the portfolio, non-player characters, which you might have come across uh, as you explored some worlds in the library in previous lectures. And then finally posters and how these could be used uh, in your assessment. There is also a link on this page, which you can click on and it gives you those video links but also provides you with uh, instructions in written form on how to use these different um, tools in Minecraft. So I would ask you at this stage to pause the video and to go to this page on your loop page and to click through these videos and watch exactly and follow the instructions as to what to do. Once you have done this, you can return to the loop page and from here, again in week four, you will see that there is a task that students will be doing in class and that you would be expected to do uh, while watching this video. So again, now that you are familiar with the assessment tools, you will now do this task which is to use a camera and portfolio to capture images of your house and shuttle or shuttle, sorry. Place a poster or a sign in front of the building and put some information on it. So this might be in front of your house explaining who you are and maybe what rooms are in the house. Place an NPC character in the world and give it information. Again, the instructions on how to do this are in the videos in the page available above. So spend 10 to 15 minutes doing this task and then you can return to this video instruction. So from your experience of using these tools, you can see that the camera and portfolio can be used in Minecraft education where students can collect information. They can then later print off uh, the pictures and buildings that they have done and they can use this as part of their scrapbooks or in displays around their classroom. You can also see that uh, the book and quill or the camera and portfolio or the signposts can be used to give information. Similarly, the NPCs can be used to give information. So students might decide to put NPCs in front of buildings 
and that way anybody who walks up to the NPC can learn uh, from the NPC about that building. So you can see in this sample uh, picture here we have a town guide and when the students click on the town guide they are given information about the town. This can be very helpful where students who have been collecting research and information on let's say a local history project can then give this to the NPC and the NPC uh, can be used to store this information and for other players to interact with. Similarly the signposts can be used or the posters can be used for this exact reason. Also students could place an NPC in front of another person's building and uh, give feedback to that person using the NPC. Uh, another way is again you could use the signpost. So if I have built my space shuttle somebody in my class could come along and put a signpost in front giving me feedback on what they think I could improve on or what they think is very good about the building I have done so far. So these are just some examples of how these uh, tools could be used for assessment and feedback within the Minecraft world. Again if you look at the good practice videos you will see that uh, students can use these in lots of different creative ways to give each other feedback and for teachers to assess. Now that we have looked at the assessment tools that are in Minecraft, we will now begin to look at the sample progressional scheme and we will also look at the assignment that uh, has been posted and is available at the very bottom of our loop page. Down here where it says assessment. If you click on this um, tab, you will get an option to click on the assignment. When you click on the assignment, it says click here to access the assignment. At which point you will be asked to copy the document. And when you make a copy, you will see the assignment. Now, there are two parts to this assignment. The first is your progressional scheme. And the second is a rationale for your scheme. So the first part asks you to develop a simplified scheme of work on a topic of choice for a senior class in primary school that draws on game-based learning principles and Minecraft. Please ensure to fulfill the following requirements. Detail the progressional sequence and development of your chosen topic around four or more lessons, planning for complementary use of game-based learning and other teaching and learning approaches. Outline clearly the broad learning objectives, curricular linkage, teaching and learning approaches and tasks, making coherent linkage to game-based learning principles. It can be assumed that the class in question has experience using Minecraft, as well as of working collaboratively in groups. This means that you don't need to have lessons where the students are just getting the basics of Minecraft. You can assume that they're pretty savvy when it comes to it already. Here we have a link to these, an assignment template. Use this to begin your um, progressional scheme. This assignment template is what we would like you to use for your scheme. Following on from this, we will then ask you to have a rationale for your scheme. Your rationale is about 250 words and write a rationale to justify why you designed particular learning tasks to embed game-based learning principles within the scheme you've developed. Please make reference to three game-based learning principles and why you chose to focus on these making reference to pertinent research literature. If you remember from week one, we provided you with the game-based learning infographic that had five key uh, game-based learning principles. Um, use this infographic to help you. And also in week one, you will see that there are readings that you can use um, that focus on your pertinent uh, research. As you can see on the assignment template or the assignment um, question page, there is a link to the assignment template. Um, this will bring you, when you click on it, make a copy, this will bring you to the assignment template that you can use and edit for your assignment. So we already have the assignment scheme, the progressional scheme template ready for you to go. So what you are to do here is fill in each of these sections and you can see down here we have a couple of new sections that you wouldn't see in your normal scheme 
uh, one of these is the key for game-based learning principles section. This section here has um, each of the game-based learning principles um, with a kind of shorthand note beside them. So you will see when I go through an example of a scheme how these are used in order to uh, spell out and point toward point uh, any readers towards exactly what principles are being used uh, throughout each of the lessons. Over here we also have a general assessment strategy um, and you can see in this section you would put in what you would use or assessment strategies that you would use across each of the lessons. So things that you're going to do in each lesson rather than writing them out in each lesson you can put them in here. Okay so what I'm going to do actually and the best way of looking through this assignment template is to give you an example of uh, an exemplar scheme. So I might share, I'll put this assignment template over on one side and I will get our scheme on the other side. Okay, so you can see, actually I'll just share our scheme, best way of doing it, and I'll, sh I'll talk through each of the sections of the scheme. So in previous sessions you would have looked at um, good practice videos and you would have looked at building Tala from 100 years ago. Um, if you haven't seen that it's on I think it's in yeah it's in week three and you can go back and look through the content on the loop page and you'll see uh, recreate a video on recreating Tala 100 years ago. So you guys are expected to come up with your own scheme your own idea it might ne not necessarily be a history project it could be a science could be an English could be story making maths project you decide yourselves um, but this is what how you fill out your your scheme as you go along so you can see here that uh, in the project section we have our title in the minecraft world we chose a teacher made flat creative world with a grid outline on it yours might be different you might use put in the url if you're using a world that is available on the minecraft education website and um, over here you can see that there are subject areas number of lessons, this is the digital learning framework strand or standard and statement, this we will go through in week five, uh, it's expected that each um, student puts in a standard and a statement, the digital learning framework is the overarching policy that guides why we use technology um, in, our, in our lessons. So down here we have a uh, linkage and integration which goes into more specific um, I suppose strands and strand units and what exactly is being linked uh, or how it's being linked uh, throughout, the, throughout the, the course of the scheme. Here we have our team and inquiry questions which are quite important and which focus the learning throughout each of the, the lessons. Broad learning outcomes also very important. You can see here develop an understanding of time and chronology, chronology to place people, stories and buildings in Tala within a broad historical sequence and so on. Ask questions about a piece of evidence associated with Tala 1916. Imagine and discuss the feelings and motives of people in the past of Tala. So this section is very important uh, to show that you understand you have a, you know, from this we'll be able to see whether you have a good understanding of how you're going to link curriculum, uh, if you have good ideas and leading questions and uh, learning outcomes that drive the learning of this scheme. Again, this section will be filled in for you, children's previous uh, related learning that is filled in for you in your assignment template. And then you've got your general assessment strategies where we've put in some that we will use in all of our classes. Down here, you've got a key for GBL principles. So, you can see as we go along through each of these sections that these pop up. So in section one, uh, introduction and research. So what did Tala look like? Challenge using Minecraft, recreate Tala in the, 19, in the early 1900s. So that's what basically what we're, we're introducing and starting today. Um, the students are going to compare and look at old and new maps of Tala and students are going to map out their version of Tala 1916. And they're going to create a list of questions as a result of that. So the teacher motivates the students by introducing the Minecraft project. So this has motivation in it. A whole class teacher presents current Google map of Tala. And the students find and discuss the buildings and structures. So you can see here that I have or we have 
specifically focused on what types of buildings that we want them to look at and we've also put in that this is active learning and it's a challenging task. The class then examines the 1912 map and um, they look at these different buildings so again more specific and there is linked to the GBL principles so these, this task has critical thinking, active learning and it's challenging. There are criteria then for students to fill out and um, identify that Sean Walsh Park, Housing Estates, The Square, Smith's Toy Store and other modern buildings were not there 100 years ago. So it's very specific here what I'm looking for and what we expect from the students in this scheme. Group brainstorm then, uh, so again showing the different types of, so whole class, group brainstorm, the different uh, organisation of each of the sections. Students are assigned into groups, students now write some questions about uh, about what they have learned um, again a challenging critical thinking motivating task the teacher puts the old map of Tala and draws a grid the students each receive a blank map and draw a similar version of this so again a challenging active learning task in-game assessment strategies no this wasn't done during the game wasn't played today uh, but there are other specific lesson assessments okay then we have lesson two in this case was a field trip and there was different tasks involved in that. So you can see through them, children make notes on a pastor's brief talk about the church's history, uh, listen to Sister Anne's presentation and walk the grounds of the St. Mary's Priory, take photos, measure the perimeter. So there's active learning going on there, challenging tasks, critical thinking. Um, other specific lesson assessments. So again, there are lesson assessments highlighted here. Group work and class debate. So this is a motivating motivating task, uh, challenging motivation, critical thinking. Class are discussing and voting for which group gets to build what. Once the buildings are decided, each group works on designing their buildings. They use the photo and pictures in the resource folder to draw their buildings. They use the measurements to ensure the buildings are to scale. Over here, we've got a class website um, that has been designed for this activity. We've also got in the resources what, what is required. Up here, some other resources that were required. And up here, we've got our maps of old Tala, new Tala, um, and the different resources that were required for those lessons. Okay, so as you see, as we go along, the students are starting now to get towards the build section. Students enter the Minecraft world and fly to assigned areas. A uh, teacher has a grid prepared. So this could be highlighted as motivation as well. Students assign building roles in their groups. And you can see here all of the different GBL principles that are featured within these tasks. Okay. Um, as we go down through it, then we're going to lesson four and five. Again, to save, wor save words, um, in lesson four and five, the students are doing pretty much the same thing. Obviously, they're, they're doing different smaller tasks, but the whole lesson kind of revolves around using Minecraft and working on the buildings. So lesson four and five are similar. Um, Again, students add in posters and signposts to give information. So they're using some of the assessment um, tools that are available in Minecraft here. And you can see that some of them are being highlighted here in the rubric for the students. And then in lesson six, there is a final construction. Uh, students use the feedback from lesson five to begin their constructions. Uh, students spawn NPC characters beside buildings. They could have links to different um, web pages, i.e., our website and uh, the maps, etc., and in game assessment strategies are mentioned here as well. So that's an example of how an exemplar uh, scheme would look. Again, it's one particular approach where we did a local history project. Um, you could use, you could do, a, you could decide to go down a very different route, and that would be excellent to see some more creative ideas. Um, so it's up to you, but follow the same assessment template or assignment template and um, that's kind of an example of how it should look. So now that we've looked at the progressional scheme and the assignment template and the question, if you have any questions, bring them with you to your lecture next week and you can ask your lecturer there. Um, the next thing we're going to look at as part of this week's lecture is firstly, how can we get Minecraft education in our schools? 
So when you guys go out on placement or when you guys go out into schools, you are going to find that some schools have it and some schools do not have it. And it can be a little bit tricky to figure out how you get access to it. Um, firstly, I would advise that you speak to whoever is in charge of IT or digital learning in your school when you go out on placement and um, they will be able to tell you then uh, what what sort of um, package you have or licensing agreement you have with Microsoft. If you have uh, a certain Office 365 package um, then and students in your school have email accounts, then your you will more than likely also have access to Minecraft education. The problem with this is most schools do not have this because it's costly and schools don't feel the need at primary level to have um, email accounts for all of their students. So an alternative to this and something that I have done myself in schools is to just buy 20 to 25 licenses for Minecraft education. Uh, there is a group who sell this um, product basically and uh, that is if you email info at prodigylearning.com, Prodigy Learning is the name of the company, and they have um, particular experience when it comes to setting up small, like numbered licenses, such as 20 or 25. Uh, I have found that 20, 25 licenses is ideal because you only have 20 or 25 devices in your school anyway. So if you've got a laptop cart, you can associate each laptop, so laptop one, might have a username and login. Laptop 2 might have a different username and login. And then when the laptop cart goes to each classroom, the students just enter the username and login and they have access to Minecraft education. Uh, you don't need all of the students to have their own login. They, Because they're all using the devices, they can just have one login for each device and that works perfectly. Um, I think it costs about five euro per uh, annum per device. So you're looking at about 100 euro for 20 devices. Uh, on a yearly basis, um, which is something that schools are more, now that they have more uh, funding coming from the department, um, it is something that schools might be able to provide for. We will now look at the Hour of Code. Um, Hour of Code, to give you a brief introduction, was set up a long time ago by a group called Coder Dojo, and their initial uh, the initial reason why Coder Dojo was set up was to give students and people in the community um, an opportunity to take part in coding activities with friends and family and uh, other people within your community. It has since grown um, to be a worldwide success and one of the results of this success is the introduction of the Hour of Code. And the Hour of Code basically is something that's encouraged for teachers to take part in uh, once a year and it's to give your students in your class a chance to take part in one hour of coding and you know to make it more child friendly they have introduced lots of fun games and um, one particular game that they have seen there are great benefits to is to use minecraft so there are three or four different there's four different types of uh, minecraft hour of code games that are available on the Hour of Code website. So the first is Minecraft Voyage Aquatic. I'm going to actually go to the web link here. Uh, Minecraft Voyage Aquatic. Then there's Minecraft Hero's Journey and Minecraft Adventure and uh, Minecraft Designer. So what we're going to get you guys to do today is to take part in one of these activities. Last year's Fort Years went to different schools and different classrooms around the country and actually did this hour of code with their students. So this is something that we would like you to do today and um, to get started and to get through some of the levels of one of these. So it's a good introduction to how uh, coding can be done and how Minecraft can be used to kind of create that engaging um, environment. So I'm going to do the Minecraft Voyage Aquatic and I'm just going to start on level one to give you an introduction. So there are videos at the start that give you a walkthrough uh, for each of the different levels. I'm going to skip that and choose my character. So you're given instructions then um, as to what you need to do. You need to collect supplies. Okay, so as you can see your your character is here in, in this uh, video game here and you need to get your character to get to the chest and open it up. So there are hints as you go along 
but you can see here that this is your workspace and here are your blocks so at the moment I've only two blocks available for me and already in the workspace there is the option when run move forward so if I am to click when run move forward so if I click run you can see he only moves one space and stops so let's reset I want them to move a couple more spaces okay and that's level one students of all ages will find they'll be able to do that level and it gets progressively harder uh, as does in game based learning principle as you go through to each of the levels it gets a bit more challenging for the students so I'm going to continue to level two and now there is a turn involved as well okay and it gets progressively harder as you can see I think there's 12 levels up the top uh, your job now is to once this video ends is to or sorry you can pause this video now and you can go through levels one uh, spend 15 minutes see how far you can get see if you can get to level 12 you'll find it to get progressively harder especially around the fifth level they get they start to get very hard so give that a go now for a few minutes and then you can return to this video so now that you have played hour of code and got through some of the levels we're going to look at uh, how hour of code ties into our game based learning principles so if we remember our infographic that is available on the loop page we will now go through each of the different sections so motivating so hour of code uses colorful graphics and um, the game that you have played voyage aquatic uses sounds relatable characters the idea of minecraft uh, which is something that students find fun and um, and it creates a nice story and narrative there are videos at the start of each level that give instructions for for students um, as they proceed in the hour of code game there is also an action consequence element so as students progress through the game they're given feedback as they progress so if they make a mistake they are given a warning and uh, when they when they come to the end there is a noise that alerts them to their mistake if they succeed similarly there is a noise that alerts them to the fact that they succeeded challenge is are the challenges in hour of code um, leveled as each student progresses from level 1 to 12 the levels get and the challenges get progressively more difficult students need to think outside the box they need to um, develop skills as they go along and no level is easier than the last level before it so the challenge gets harder and the students are tested as they progress there are multiple ways to make progress when you are playing the hour of code in some of the levels students have the option to structure their code a little bit differently than their uh, peers or other students might do also in some of the levels students have the option to go a different route uh, as they progress and guide their character through the level so this gives them some autonomy uh, within the game and finally encouraging active learning and critical thinking so the hour of code does encourage active learning because students have to engage with the content they have to read the instructions and they have to um, physically and uh, actively take part in the game by pressing the buttons and directing their character through it there is also a lot of critical thinking involved in the hour of code because each level has problems and students need to try new approaches and think outside the box or be creative in order to achieve their goals so from looking through each of these elements of the infographic we can see that the hour of code um, does employ key principles from game-based learning so it is motivating it has action consequence it's challenging there's multiple ways of progress and it does encourage active learning and critical thinking so now that we have come to the conclusion of today's lecture we are going to talk about the coursework for next week so you may just have um, played one or two of the levels in the minecraft aquatic uh, lesson so before next week please try and finish uh, one of the hour of code lessons so whether that be the minecraft aquatic or one of the other ones from the website um, after this i would like you to go to scratch uh, and sign up before next week so i'm just going to demonstrate how that is done if you click on 
or if you go and type in scratch.mit.edu, you should be brought to this page. And here you have Join Scratch. When you click on this, you can enter your username, password. I would advise you to use your, when it, when it asks for your email address, I would advise you to use your college email address. And um, when you get to the next page, let me just go through this. <laughs> You can enter in when it gets to your, let's just go with Ireland. It doesn't matter what you put down as your years. And you can put in your email address. So put in your college email address here. And then when you press create account, you will need to verify using your college email address. That's very important that you verify it first because otherwise you won't be able to share your content. So please do that as well before next week. Again, to get to our code.org uh, website or our Minecraft uh, coder website, if you go code.org, you're brought to the main page of code.org. And you can see there's lots of different activities. And if you look for a search for Minecraft, so do an hour of code you've got different types of error code so there's a dance one there's a minecraft error code here when i click into that we're brought to our minecraft error of code tutorials so that's where you find those things and your coursework for this week is to finish the hour of code and to go to the scratch and sign up before next week so that will bring us to the end of today's lecture if you have any questions please hold on to them and in next week's lecture, you can bring them to your lecture. Thank you.